Well, my name is Rush Hill, and uh, I'm not sure why I do this, but uh, uh, I am chairman of the committee of which this is assigned to. And it is a pleasure to welcome you to our uh, March, uh, March meeting. Uh, we are very pleased uh, to have a great speaker today, and uh, I think you'll find it educational. Um, it is my uh, distinct responsibility, <clears throat> what the script says, to, uh, to introduce uh, an individual that, <clears throat> that truly is a legend in his own mind, and, and, and that's uh, Mr. Steve Rosansky, the uh, mayor of the business community and the head of the chamber. Thank you, Russ. <laughs> Thank you, Russ. Okay, welcome to Wake Up Newport. I'm Steve Rosansky, as uh, Russ said, president and CEO of the Newport Beach Chamber of Commerce. We've got a great program for you this morning. People have paid hundreds of dollars to hear this woman talk uh, not too long ago, and you guys get it for free. So uh, thank you all for coming. I hope uh, if you didn't get one of those Sprinkles cupcakes, make sure you grab one on the way out, because uh, that was quite an investment by Newport Academy. We'll hear from them in just a minute. But uh, before we do that, we have some VIP type folks that I'd like to introduce. So first off is Councilman Jeff Herdman. Jeff, wait. <laughs> Former Mayor Keith Curry is with us this morning. Come back. Assistant uh, City Manager, Carol Jacobs, back there, there she is. Uh, our fairly new Harbor Master, Kurt Borstein. I think Carol was actually the Harbor Master there for a little while, right? So I think she's probably glad to give up that position, so thanks for coming on board, Kurt. Uh, uh, Lifeguard Battalion Chief, Brent Jacobson's with us this morning. Uh, Two people from the Civil Service Board, my sister Robin Grant, I think she's the president of the board or chair of the board, and next to her is Howard Herzog, also a board member. Uh, uh, with the Library Board of Trustees, Paul Watkins. Paul's also a last year's Citizen of the Year, last year or two years ago? A couple years ago, and he serves on the steering committee for the General Plan Update Committee. Uh, so he was here actually last night at 8 o'clock. You should have just gotten a cot and slept here and come back this morning. You know? It's a very important thing what uh, Paul and uh, well, I guess will be six others, seven, a group of seven steering committee, the city's launching into a new general plan update. It's about a two-year process. They're going to be hiring consultants and lots of outreach to the city. They're, I guess, videotaping all the meetings. So you can, if you can't attend, uh, you can always watch it on uh, NBTV. But uh, very important process that will unfold over the next two years. I uh, also want to introduce the chair of our board, Sam El Raba, in the back. Sam, wait. He's, he's watching me. I'm, he's, you know, you're supposed to give me a review at the end of the, your term, so. Right. Notice I'm wearing a suit today. Okay. Thank you, Sam. He signed that to you now? Oh, they out, you, you, uh, you've been out, you outsourced it? Uh-oh. Now I'm in trouble. Um, Don, oh, Don snuck in. Don Yon, he's on our... Um, don't say it, Harbor Commission. Harbor Commissioner Dinyon. <laughs> so with that, I th hopefully got everybody. Uh, uh, oh, uh, is it Lieutenant, or Deputy Chief, Jay Short, yeah. <laughs> I only know that because I, I look closely at your badge. I was gonna say Lieutenant, but he's the Deputy Chief. Um, okay, so with that, uh, we do have uh, the Sprinkles Cupcakes, compliments of Newport Academy. I think Leanne Brodicky, this where's Leanne? She's going to come up and say a few words about Newport Academy? Come on up, Leanne. Good morning, everyone. I uh, appreciate you having us and wanted to make sure you all get sprinkles. I uh, just want you to know we do not give that to our teenagers for breakfast. <laughs> So don't worry, they get fruit. Um, just wanted to let you know a little bit about Newport Academy. We've been around about 11 years and we're local here in Orange County. We are an adolescent treatment center for mental health, substance abuse, and eating disorders for 12 to 17 year old kids. And uh, we've been around for a while. We're kind of the, the best kept secret because we were just really small for a long time. But over the last few years, we've seen a need um, to really help more kids and families. And so we've been able to grow mindfully, work with insurance, and really be able to help um, when teens and families are struggling. So we see a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression, uh, a, lot of, you know, a lot of substance abuse and eating disorders. So we really work from a place of love and empowering them to find their voice and reconnect. 
they're so disconnected by the time they get to us that's really important that they reconnect with themselves, with their peers, with their families, and really, you know, without the cell phones, without the screens. And so um, I just want to say thanks so much. And uh, my cards, my brochures are out and about if you want to meet or if you want to come see our program, we'd love to have you. We have a residential program in Orange Park Acres, and we have a therapeutic day school and outpatient here in Costa Mesa area. So uh, thanks so much. I, I visited their facility in Costa Mesa. It's a really nice place, and so certainly if you have a need for uh, a teen to be in uh, that type of facility, I think you couldn't find any better. Um, I also want to bring someone up. Uh, she's always here with her deck of students, um, Sheridan Hurst. Come on up, Sheridan. Um, we just got, yeah, come on up. If you're with DECA this morning, just raise your hand real quick. DECA people, all right. She's going to talk about uh, something she just sent me an email about. I wanted her to share the news with everybody else. So. So we've had just a fantastic year in competition. Uh, at our Southern California conference, we had 33 students uh, take 39 different medals, top 10 silver, gold, bronze, glass trophies. Then we move on to the state conference, which was just this last weekend. So uh, 2,700 students from around the state gather and compete in a wide variety of areas. And Newport Harbor students took third, third place trophy in startup business plan. And so those students are going to Orlando to the international conference, um, along with three others that qualified uh, in chapter campaigns. And they qualified by doing community service, advocate advocacy campaigns, activities during Global Entrepreneurship Week, and so they had to package all that together to, to earn their birth in Orlando. And uh, 18,000 students will be gathering in Orlando from across uh, this nation and internationally Canada and all of that. So um, I'm just so proud to share that news. Um, if, you're, if you're interested in um, mentoring the two students that want to improve their startup business plan. They're looking for people to pitch to and improve because they're allowed to improve their plan and their paper and their presentation from state to internationals. It has to do with uh, sustainable and reusable straws. And so anyway, I'm super proud of, of all of them and we're going to Disney World. <laughs> all right, thank you, Sheridan. Is there any um, students from FBLA here this morning? FBLA? Okay. Future Business Leaders of America from Corona Del Mar High School. Thanks for joining us. So I think that's all I have. I'll turn it back over to Rush and he can introduce our guest speaker this morning. Thank you. Takes constant training, but he's doing pretty well. <laughs> Well, we do have a, a great morning in store for us, um, all things Newport. Uh, we're very honored to have our mayor, Diana Dixon. Uh, Diana was first elected to the city council in 2014 and served her first term, uh, was reelected in 2018 and is now in her second term uh, in uh, 19, or 19, <laughs> sorry about that, in uh, 2015. Uh, she was uh, elected by her comrades on the uh, on the council as mayor pro tem and in 2016 served as mayor. And now in 2019, she was elected as mayor once again. Uh, she's very proud of that. Uh, the reality is, as we told her, she's gonna do it till she gets it right. So, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's great at that. She has a very strong um, uh, philosophy that, that she governs with and and, and that is a platform of, of uh, fiscal discipline, of transparency, and, and the strange, unbelievable characteristic of being able to listen uh, to both community and to business. And I think those are uh, very strong markers for which to uh, lead. Um, in her background, before doing all of this public work, she had a 40-year career in leadership with uh, major public and private companies. Uh, one that kind of leads the pack was Avery Dennison, a Fortune 300 company that uh, is about a $6.5 billion enterprise. And, uh, and at uh, Avery Dennison, she was responsible for the company's global communications, government relations, marketing communications, corporate philanthropy, uh, managing of the intersection of business and government, 
and forging connections among business, government, communities, and nonprofit organizations. Couldn't think of a better background to go into, uh, uh, to go into public service. She holds a, a political science degree from that small institution in LA called USC. And um, how many people here are from USC? All right, I'll, I'll, I'll speak more slowly then. Uh, yeah, uh, Yes, well, on, onward, sorry, I digress. Um, uh, she's uh, married, has a nice family, uh, married 44 years. Congratulations on that as a, uh, uh, an activity in itself. And her husband, Patrick, uh, currently serves as special counsel to our newly elected district attorney, uh, Todd Spitzer. So watch what you say. And uh, Diana, please uh, give her a warm welcome. Well, thank you, Raj. It's always a pleasure to be here and wake up with all of you. I think going back to the DECA recognition, I seen the DECA students and the future business leaders here once a month getting here at 7.30 in the morning. That alone is, is worthy of commendation. So it's, it's, it's really wonderful to see the dedication of our young students in our community. Well, as Steve mentioned, um, this is uh, the continuing roadshow of the mayor speaking to the community, and I, uh, we had the mayor's dinner on February 7th, and so I opened the mayor, my speech, my state of the city speech with a little video that I'll share with you right now. Steve asked me to entertain you, so here <laughs> I, will pre I brought my entertainment. Um, and let me tell you a little bit of the context for this, as I've... As Rush mentioned, I was honored and gratified to be uh, elected mayor amongst my co uh, council colleagues last December. Uh, truly a great, great, great honor. And uh, I'm grateful for that support. And also because I feel that I could, last couple of years, we've had a, maybe last four years, have had a tumultuous political landscape in our local government. And I, as Rush mentioned, I, I enjoy a lifetime, a professional lifetime a career of bringing people together, finding consensus to move something forward, solve problems, let's work together. So we, there's a solution there somewhere. And um, this video reflects that uh, intent of mine is to work with all of our council members. They're all great people. They all are committed to representing the people of Newport Beach in a professional, dutiful way. And even though it was the mayor's dinner, I thought I should give a little tribute to my fellow colleagues. So if, I, if Ed showed me how to push the right button here, so I will push the right button. Good evening, Newport Beach, and welcome to Speak Up Newport's annual Mayor's Dinner. It's a fantastic evening, and I'm delighted to be here with you this evening. I thought before we get into the more formal speech-making part of the evening, I wanted to allow you to have a conversation with my colleagues. And my six colleagues on the dais are going to be speaking this evening in this video, and I'd like to share their thoughts with you. You gotta go in sprinkles. Nuts. Uh, I don't like the chocolate bananas. Although there's money in the banana stand, I like the uh, Balboa bars. Oh, I like uh, Heath Bar Crunch. Nuts. Sprinkles. Mix the nuts. Abraham Lincoln. Oh, several. Winston Churchill. Margaret Thatcher. Those are good starters. Abraham Lincoln. I really admire George Washington for obvious reasons. So many, but I'm going right now with Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Abraham Lincoln. George Washington, the uh, founding father of our country. Politically, that would be Abraham Lincoln. Sailboat. Although at my age, now I'm a cruiser person, but uh, I was an avid sailor when I was younger. My husband's a sailboat person. I better say sailboat. <laughs> All three. I'm a Duffy boat guy. I'm a Duffy boat person. Definitely wooden boat. I'm a Duffy person. I read six newspapers a day. It's hard when they're not all hard copy anymore, but online. And I like to think I have a great sense of humor. <laughs> I was a teenage dynamiter. I love singing opera in the shower. 
When I was in college, I actually worked for ABC at, in a production of the uh, Rose Parade. I was a gopher, so I got to do a number of things, including actually some of the floral arrangement that you actually saw on TV in front of the announcers. I am such an open book, I couldn't think of anything. I really don't know. One thing that my fellow council members do not know about me is that I'm not ticklish. <laughs> uh, recently, walking precincts. Hobby, meeting with people, talking to people, listening to people. I love it. I love the people. Governing uh, city council, my responsibilities on city council. Being on the water. Um, watching tidal rise in the harbor. When I have time, I walk. I walk everywhere. I used to paint. I loved painting, but there's no time for that anymore. Reading the municipal code and the uh, budget, isn't, isn't that everybody's? A harbor. A harbor. I'd choose Crystal Cove State Beach. A harbor. I would choose the harbor and the beach. I'll have both. <laughs> the harbor. I was, I was thinking about that. It was uh, Paul Anka's Venus. I went back and listened to it this morning. Uh, that I'll admit to, Bobby Brown, don't be cruel. <laughs> I'm from Fresno. It was Alan Jackson's greatest hits. Well, the first, would there, not, there was no tape, there was no CD, it was an album. So we're talking ancient history. <laughs> so it's probably the Beach Boys. And, yeah, the Beach Boys. Buddy Holly, I think it was. And uh, it was uh, rock, rock Around the Clock. Jose Feliciano, I think. Deja Vu, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Uh, accomplish what the people want in Newport Beach and work together with my counts, fellow council members to do great things for Newport. We have a lot of big ticket items on our agenda, and we have a new general plan, we have airport issues, we uh, want to keep our city safe and continue to make the city the best it can be. And we've got a great community, and I just want to work with the people together and with my co fellow colleagues to be the best we can be. We've seen the last couple of years, home uh, values rise, crime fall, uh, we're getting the, uh, the budget surplus continuing while we're also paying attention to our long-term debt. But going forward, we need to continue these fundamentals and move forward with things like the Corona Del Mar Fire Station and Library is about to open. Uh, I'd love to see a groundbreaking on the Lido Fire Station. We'd love to get the, the ball rolling on a Junior Guards program. And then we need to do things that are very important, but maybe a little bit eye glazing over, like advanced metering infrastructure, Title 17 revision, general plan updates, and things like that. Frankly, we just need to move the business of the city forward. Uh, I'd like to see a um, substantial reduction of the unfunded pension liability. There are several. There are so many. I'd, I'd like to see our new general plan update be really innovative and um, help recognize how technology can actually solve some of the problems that we are experiencing. Traffic and the airport and uh, overdevelopment goes with that. If we could find the, some solutions for those two things, then the overdevelopment would not be as big an issue. But we don't, we don't want to turn into Miami Beach. We want to make sure that we maintain the character and the charm of uh, Newport Beach. Move the, the agenda of the residents of Newport Beach forward, starting with our general plan that's coming up, doing a good job with that and presenting uh, my constituents. I've got a number of priorities, but I, I suppose uh, the, the, right now in, in, in today's scenario would be to um, uh, establish uh, trust and credibility uh, within the city for, for those of us who are governing the city. Well, as you see, we have a great group of colleagues who work together on our city council representing all of you. Diane! Great individual people. What are you doing here? 
Well, how are you, Chief? It, it's good to see you. I just, Chief, Fire Chief. I just came by to drop a, a little subtle thank you very much for, um, the very subtle thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. Thank you to all Fire the Station. members of the City Council. Thank you, and thank you for what you do. And now, what brings you here, Chief? Really? <laughs> Well, that's nice that we uh, worked out these uh, fire stations for our partners in public safety here. But, you know, quite frankly, man, we have some things to talk about, too. Uh, we at the police department have got some needs as well. And I think with the two fire stations and the generosity that we've seen for uh, for our partners here, I think we can uh, show some love to the police department. What do you, what think, do you think, everyone? Should I listen to these guys? We need these guys. I want to make them happy. So you, thank you for being here this, this evening. Thank you so much. Hold on. I, thank I, you. I think I see the boss. Joe. Oh, boss all is right, coming. Right, Got to get back to work. Bye, Diane. Nice to see you, man. All right. Thank you. As I was saying, I'm very grateful and fortunate and honored to oh, be hey, working with oh, working to see with you a wonderful here. city manager, oh, Grace. Thank you so yeah. much. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. well. I'm excited to be here. And, and you've been doing a great job for the city of Newport Beach and all these people out here are, are meet, many of them are meeting you for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. I've been enjoying going out into the community with you and uh, working with you on your town hall. So oh. it's been a And here's a great the community experience. and we're here to celebrate our community and your elected office holders and our appointed city manager and our fire chief and our police. And we didn't get everybody who's on the city staff, but just this is an opportunity to thank our staff members for all that they do for our community and for all of you working together collegially, collaboratively, and respectfully serving the people of Newport Beach. So thank you. and. I uh, will conclude the video and then I'll proceed into my formal remarks, but I want to thank you, Grace, oh, well, thank for what you. you're doing for the people oh, well, in Newport Oh, I appreciate it. Beach. And I'm going to get back to my staff, oh. too, and get back to work. <laughs> okay, round them up. <laughs> thank you, and thank you all. So we'll continue on now. End of video. <laughs> Whoops. Well, so that sets the stage, and I couldn't be more proud to work with a great uh, city council. And actually, I should say, since I'm sitting in the audience looking at former mayors and council members, it's just an honor to carry on the tradition of serving the people of Newport Beach uh, with respect and courtesy and listening. And we're all here together to work together to make our city a, great, a greater city. Make Newport Beach greater. <laughs> it is already great. Um, so let me just uh, run through a few things just to update you on the state of the city. As I said at the mayor's dinner, I am very proud to be able to say the state of your city is excellent. We have a strong city. It is well managed. We have a new city manager, as many of you, I think Grace has spoken here a few last month, wasn't it? Steve, where are you? Uh, um, because I, I, she spoke yesterday or this week to other groups, so I, I follow along with her. So our messages are very similar to update on what's going on in the city. Um, we have a great city. The financial condition of the city is excellent. It is strong. Not that we don't have some liabilities. Um, we, many of you have heard me talk about our unfunded pension liability, which all cities in California are dealing with. Uh, my message about that, a couple of things under the heading of fiscal discipline is uh, to, like prepaying your mortgage wherever we can, we will prepay that liability. Our purpose is to preserve and protect those pensions. Our public employees, our employees have, have earned them. That's the law. We want to protect them, but we will want to uh, deal with the rising liability which occurs when CalPERS uh, investment strategies aren't as successful, so cities have to make up the gap. As I've been serving on the Finance Committee for and chairing it for four years, and I remain a member of the Finance Committee, I couldn't be more proud of how our city management and my fellow colleagues work with great discipline and rigor to make paying down that f unfunded pension liability uh, on a disciplined, uh, in a disciplined manner, and and not. Uh, eat into or take away from the continuing investment in our own city programs and services and infrastructure. So our job on the council, on the finance committee, in, in under the category of fiscal discipline is to make sure we pay our bills, reduce that liability, and continue to invest in improving the city wherever we can. And I believe we're doing a solid job under that heading of fiscal discipline. Very proud that the long tradition of the city is that we, the city staff produces, a city manager produces a city surplus, or budget surplus every year, and we take that, we can't count on it, but. We're, we'll take it when we when we, all the numbers are crunched, and then we 
the council policy is to uh, allocate roughly 50% to paying down our uh, financial obligations and then 50% to invest in neighborhood enhancement and improvement. And so that uh, is a significant chunk of money every year that we can say, where should we put this money after we pay down our pension? Incidentally, I'm paying down the pension, which incidentally is $320 million. That's more than our general fund budget. Um, is uh, is, is clearly a priority. We have to pay the regular bill plus the uh, prepayment. We are saving future city council members, as this future in the next 15 years, uh, about $15 million and more because we are prepaying all that interest uh, up front and not having that just uh, collect, collect, collect. And we're paying it over a shorter period of time, uh, less than 20 years, maybe it's about 16 or 17 now, that the goalposts keep moving because of the stock market. Uh, with CalPERS investment strategies, but nonetheless, we are paying it down and being responsible to do that without affecting or eating into any important programs or services. Speaking of the budget, we are now in the beginning, uh, well into the beginning of preparing the budget for the 2019 and 20 fiscal year that will begin July 1st. So the Finance Committee works twice, a, meets twice a month in these months leading up to the period where the council will be reviewing the budget that is submitted by the city manager. And I know uh, Grace has talked about her staff is putting together their budget recommendations now. And we'll, we as a council will be seeing them as we move forward. This is March, April, and May. All the public meetings related to the Finance Committee, uh, study sessions, and the City Council from now, this Tuesday, in fact, uh, through the uh, mid-June, or probably the first meeting in June where we will pass the budget. Um, next, this coming Tuesday on the Council agenda, is, I think the study session is the Capital Improvement Program, the capital spending that is being recommended by Public Works. And so that is always a good discussion to identify our priorities. We are very fortunate as a city, as I've analyzed these numbers and participated in, these, in this number crunching for the last five years now, is uh, under the heading of being well managed because I, I, am, I serve on the board of the uh, Associated Cities of California, of Orange County, the 34 cities. So I have a lot of exposure to how si other cities are managing a lot of their pressing issues specifically the unfunded pension issues and and how that in those cities I just talked yesterday with a council member mayor pro tem of Huntington Beach I know this in Fullerton other older cities full service cities like Newport Beach where we full service means fire we, we manage our own fire and police and lifeguard services and we are an, an old city and so we have uh, frankly, more retired employees than we have current employees. And so we're paying their pensions, and we should, uh, but because people live longer, those pensions get paid for a long period of time. I'm already seeing uh, in Huntington Beach and Fullerton, for example, just something like road repair. Fullerton uh, and Huntington Beach are both on a 15 to 17 year cycle of repairing their streets, the city streets. Our cycle is like eight years, which is world class. So we want to continue to make Newport Beach the beautiful city that it is because it attracts visitors, it attracts homeowners, investment and businesses to keep funding the, the underlying economic strength and vitality of the city. But because we do fund the infrastructure and and projects that aren't really apparent, whether it's wastewater treatment lines and fixing our infrastructure, those are every, uh, projects we have to continue to do relentlessly and uh, not defer maintenance, uh, thinking someone else is going to take care of it. So we are getting our arms around a lot of important uh, infrastructure issues, which may not be exciting, but they're really critical. In fact, um, in the last month, our utility department uh, has called me out to look at a uh, wastewater line broke over on, in my district, in District 1, and we repaired it, fixed it, and, and that's all good. It's a 70-year-old line, and the other day you may have noticed on Jamboree and Coast Highway there was a lot of repair work going on. It lasted about a week, a main water line broke. And so we are an old city and there are costs associated with maintaining the quality of, of our services and our infrastructure. But we're on it. We have a great staff to do that. Um, a couple of issues that are key, as you heard in the video, uh, that are really 
front burner and high priority, and there's not just one, <laughs> well, there's several. You heard uh, some of the members, and Jeff Herdman mentioned this too, and, and Joy on the general plan. Uh, last night, sitting right here, many of us, I see some people here this, this morning, we were here till I guess about 7, 7.30, uh, the steering committee of the general plan update committee uh, met and is meeting uh, to organize the mechanics, uh, the details, the organizational structure of our general plan update. And as Steve said, uh, it's gonna take a couple of years and uh, the community, it is really critical. Uh, I mean, we don't show videos, but I will tell you, it is interesting and it is important to really have a role, have a voice in what your city is going to look like. And the last general plan was passed in 2006 Life has changed everywhere significantly because of technology and whether it's going to be uh, automated cars or driverless cars and new systems. Or we need to imagine and envision what our city could look like and make sure that we do everything we can to prepare for the future as well as we can see it. We'll use a lot of consultants, a lot of forward-looking research. Uh, but at the end of the day, we really have to imagine what our city will look like. The reality is, and traffic is really a number one issue for all of us, we are a city that is a pass-through city. And while we have 85,000 residents, we have 11 million visitors and rising coming to beautiful Newport Beach every, every year. And that means our police and our fire and our lifeguard services, because they're, they're really not going anywhere or they're off site this way. They're going prim these visitors are going primarily to the beach. And keeping our beaches safe and clean and well managed falls to our lifeguards where they make thousands and thousands and thousands of rescues and incident handling all year long. And we are proud of our lifeguards and our fire services and our police to keep our community safe. But we have a, this infusion of of visitors, which we welcome, it's important to our economic base, but how do we peacefully coexist with 11 million visitors, primarily in the seasonal months from May through September, October. So that places significant demands on our city and we need to um, manage that. And traffic is probably the number one manifestation of that. It's, and that, and also at the same time, east of us, Irvine and east, has exploded in population over the last 10 years. Uh, three million people live east of here, and funnily enough, they all like to come to the beach. So people are, cars are coming into our community from the east, the, from north to south as they traverse the coast, and we, all residents, feel the brunt of all that. And how do we manage that? And technology and traffic lights, synchronization, various kinds of things. We can't stop it from coming, we, we just have to manage it. And in a way that uh, works for us, we wanna be welcoming, but we want to manage it in a responsible way. Our general plan is part of that. I really can't urge, I can't say it strongly enough that uh, seeing people here last night, there are a hand, more than a handful of people here, George Leslie was here, and a number of uh, folks, um, just to be part of thinking about our future and what kind of city you want. This phase, the steering committee, is really just getting it cranked up, getting the process cranked up. Um, the second phase will be com the com composition of our general plan update committee or advisory committee. There'll be about 25 to 30 members of the community, and they'll be having we'll be having meetings all over the city. We estimate could be over 50 meetings, certainly in every district every neighborhood, community center. It, the whole point is engage the community. We want to hear from you. Take notes. Uh, we want to take notes and listen to all different points of view. And that's critical to defining our future. And this will all be manifested in a final general plan update. I don't think we're going to redo the entire, uh, this thick general plan document. The housing element, it's divided into several different parts. The housing is really critical. And uh, many of you may read what's going on in Sacramento, housing shortage in the state, affordable housing. We as a city, just so you know, there's been a lot in the newspapers about cities who fail to meet their affordable housing requirements. Our city is in compliance. The state of California is not going to be suing Newport Beach. Uh, based on our current requirements, we are meeting and exceeding those requirements. But going forward, we anticipate, because of the statewide housing shortage, 
uh, there will be new requirements. We know that will be the case. We'll hear those numbers in about 18 months where we have to find a place to put perhaps staff, city staff thinks it could be a thousand more units, pay possibly. Where do we put those units? We look at the airport area, how to make the airport area really a dynamic live, work, play environment. Uh, that could really be a dynamic uh, improvement for that area uh, and, and coupled with affordable housing. We do have affordable housing uh, under construction in our city now, which is good. It's just, I guess it cannot be enough. I will say that the state, uh, the good news and the bad news about housing shortages in the state and, and the cost of living, uh, we as a city council are really, uh, sad to say, powerless on some of this. It's the state that under a new uh, legislature that is really um, determined to tell cities what to do uh, and where local control, and this is not a political statement, this is just the reality of what can city councils really uh, do we we have to follow the rules and follow the state mandates? So I actually uh, a little bit tongue in cheek say to people who are upset about whatever the issues are, uh, many of them are coming from mandates from Sacramento and uh, being in touch with what's going on in Sacramento, being aware of that, I think is really critical as we go forward, particularly on on some of these requirements and mandates that will be linked to other. Uh, transportation funds. You build cities. You must build X number of affordable housing units before you're going to get any of your state funds for coast highway road repair. Because most of coast highways is a state highway. Anyway, that's into the weeds. But we have to be aware of what's going on in Sacramento because it definitely has an impact on how we run our city. Um, part of the general plan, but also ongoing. We mentioned that our new harbor master, Kurt Borstein, is here, and our, we have a new harbor department, which was a significant addition to, uh, to our organizational structure to bring together all the disparate harbor-related functions into a single department. So it's really exciting. I'll be, Kurt, you haven't been here six months yet, have you? No, well, so it seems like probably six years, but um, there's, just, there's a lot to do. We have our, our harbor, is, one, is probably our most significant economic resource. There was an economic study we did about a year or two ago where I identified the, the trickle-down impact of the harbor is close to a billion dollars in supporting not only marine services, harbor-related services, visitor services, restaurants, businesses. There's a billion, almost a billion dollars of economic activity that derives from our harbor. We want to continue to invest in that, whether that's clean water, clean pa uh, clear passages, and uh, making sure our visitors feel well served. And we have a beautiful marine, uh, marina park that serves our visitors well, very well and can probably continue to improve on that. But we welcome Kurt. I've said that before publicly. It's really great to have organized our harbor and uh, get control of that. Aviation, I'm looking at Jeff Herdman because he's chairman of our aviation committee and he is a busy guy. Uh, let me talk a little bit about airplanes. All of you know we all live under the flight paths of John Wayne, so this has been a fact of life in Newport Beach for decades. Uh, what is happening and why we are uh, reactivating, or not reactive, restructuring our aviation committee, because that is really going to be uh, center, the center, center one, uh, ground zero, I guess I would say, of all of our aviation airport related issues, and they primarily relate to quality of life, how the flights, how the planes take off out of John Wayne, what is their flight path. We're working with the carriers to go higher and faster out, out of our sound space quicker, and then uh, dealing with the resultant pollution from, from the jet engines. So it's not just flight paths, it's the airport itself, and uh, kind of quietly the airport, and then the airport is a partner with the city as well. Certainly, it's a county operation. Um, they want to expand. So we're this um, tension that's going to is a natural tension that is being created about protecting Newport Beach's quality of life. And I don't say that as just a nice thing. It is significant. Our quality of life creates the economic engine that supports a great deal of our county's activities. The property assessed values in Newport Beach, because it's a desirable place to live and work and invest, is the second highest assessed value contribution property taxes 
to the county of Orange. All of you who own a home or property are contributing about $586 million of that assessed value goes into the Orange County Treasurer, and then that goes out to education, health services, social services, infrastructure that the county manages. We are really, really important. The city of Newport Beach is very important to the economic strength of the county. That is our argument to those in the county who think it would be a nice thing to do to expand the airport. Because if you expand the airport with more flights, more noisier flights, more pollution raining down on our city, that will affect our quality of life and our property values. We are making, we're connecting the dots on that economic argument. We're speaking with our elected representatives at the county level. And Michelle Steele, our supervisor, is 100% sympathetic to us and we're and is an advocate for Newport Beach to protect what we have. But it is a natural tension that is going to exist because people, some people want to expand, expand the runways or expand the airport, bring in more, not only commercial jets, but they're looking right as I speak, talk about this, the County Board of Supervisors is looking to expand the general aviation portion of the air service that comes into John Wayne and expand the, the footprint of those the corporate jets. So it's, it's a never ending, uh, it's never quiet, I should say, and the neighborhood groups are critical. We have three active neighborhood groups that represent different parts of underneath the flight path. They are absolutely, we are united. Talk about bringing the people together. We are all, the community is united to defend our quality of life, and thanks to the neighborhood groups that are large, loud, and vocal about this are really important to this process. So under Jeff's leadership, we are getting all this pulled together. We're becoming advocates at the local level, at the board of supervisors level, and in Washington, dealing with our congressional representatives, because that's where the FAA is influenced. So we're coming at this from a number of, uh, surrounding the issue, literally, and we're not gonna be quiet about it and uh, you'll hear, be hearing more. And our city staff, uh, the communications coming from the city staff will be informing uh, our community and, and proactively. We have been doing this for the last year, but even stepping that up. So it's really, really critical to all of us and our quality of life. I talked about the general plan. Uh, so that started and uh, starting in about July, just to remind everyone, the listen and learn section we call, that's when the community is really going to get involved and the committee will be going around all around the city listening and learning. And uh, that will be starting mid-year. And I think Steve walking up here. Let me say, major capital projects, let me just mention, we have the Corona Del Mar Fire and Library. That's coming on board faster and under budget. We'll be uh, dedicating that sooner than we thought, probably before late spring. The Lido Fire Station moving forward. Um, Junior Lifeguard, Will mentioned that on his video. That's a, uh, that will be a public-private partnership. The Lecture Hall for the Central Library, that's coming before in, a, uh, in part of the capital update next Tuesday. Uh, that's possibly going to be very exciting where meetings just like this could be in a lecture hall where it's the uh, seating arrangements are enhanced for presentations and that will be a really strong asset for the city. So uh, I guess that's it and Steve's telling me and giving me the hook here. I just want to just end on a couple of thoughts. This is a wonderful city. That's why we're all here. I don't have to tell you that. I am honored to be your mayor. I am here to serve you. It, it is a, the greatest honor to represent a city that where the residents and citizens truly care and engaged about what is going on. And we, uh, I, I can't thank you enough, I guess, to, to the honor to serve all of you and to be here for you. So with that, I wanna thank you. Thank you for coming this morning. And thank you, Rush. Okay. I think we have time for maybe a couple of quick questions. Sure. Perfect. <laughs> oh, come on. Somebody asked me a question. Jeff, you can ask her a question. What's happening tonight at Harbor High School? Thank you. I was on my list of things to say. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Corona Del Mar. Um, many of you know the city and Costa Mesa made national news, sadly, uh, for this incident that occurred in Costa Mesa with students. and. And anti-Semitism, there was an amazing ceremony, town hall gathering Monday night at Newport Harbor where I attended and now th tonight at Corona Del Mar uh, where the community and students will come together with standing room only, very thoughtful, very important, and I urge all of you to attend. So thank you for reminding me of that. Did you have, did you have a question you were gonna say? 
Stan? No? All right, next time. All right, I just want to thank you all. Have a great day, and let me know what I can do for you. Thank you. Well, I hope you have a good feeling of the complexity it takes to run a city like Newport Beach. The, um, the fact that you hear that we're a full service city uh, is really an important fact because when you see comparisons of Newport Beach with other communities, uh, they never seem to recognize the fact that we have our own police department, we have our own fire department, we have our own marine department, we have the harbor that we take care of. We also have the library system that is the second largest attraction in Newport Beach, over a million visitors a year to our libraries, award-winning library. And, uh, and so we, we carry the burden and the pleasure of all of those items that make up our quality of life. So thank you to our mayor and to our council people that give us that direction. Now, I'm afraid to look. Is someone to my left? <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, it's sadly part of the script. But um, uh, I am now extremely pleased to see if I could bring back to the lectern. It has been a pretty short meeting. Uh, Mr. Rosansky. <laughs> Thank you, Rush. Thank you, Mayor Dixon. Great program. Obviously, a dynamic city, lots of things going on, and thank you for your leadership. Uh, just quickly, I just announced, well, it's actually not even that quickly because I can't even believe how many things we're doing this month, but uh, some of the things that we have coming up that might interest you. So next Tuesday, uh, our Inspire Women in Business program will be meeting at, uh, for lunch at the Pacific Club. Our speaker is Robin Fulman Otta. She's CEO of a couple of companies, but she's known as the singing CEO, and she's conquers business and stage, maybe she'll break out in a tune or something at this thing. I don't know, but if you're interested, uh, you can sign up online. Um, one thing that I do especially want to mention, especially for the smaller business uh, businesses here, uh, there's a new state law uh, that's uh, as of J January 1st, requires that any business that has five or more employees, so that's probably a good portion of you, is required to give supervisors two hours of sexual harassment training and uh, regular employees and part-time employees one hour of sexual harassment training. So we've taken the lead as a Chamber of Commerce and we're going to be providing these classes for any uh, Chamber members. It's only open to Chamber members, so if you're not a Chamber member and you want to take advantage of this, hey, you need to sign up. But uh, our first class will be next uh, Tuesday. It's going to be over at the Lot Theater. I think we already have 40 or so people signed up and I think we're going to cap it out at about 55. So there's not a lot of slots left. But for yeah, no, oh, I'm sorry, did I say Tuesday? Next Thursday, yeah, March 14th. Uh, it's going to be check-in at 7.30. The class is from 8 to 10. Uh, your employees or supervisors will get a certificate. This is not for the you know, a regular employee. This is just for supervisors, this first class. But they'll get the two hours of training for 10 bucks. Uh, you know, it's 50 to $100 anywhere else you go. So it's a great benefit of a chamber membership, and we hope you'll take advantage of it. We will be having classes throughout the year as a, as a regular uh, function of the chamber. So... Looking forward to that. Um, if you're a young professional, our Navigate uh, uh, group uh, is going to be meeting over at the Center Club with the C39 people. Chris Delfs back there is the head of our group. He's also the head of Elite OC, the new president of Elite OC. So if any, any younger folks uh, want to stop by and see Chris on the way out, he can tell you a little bit about what we have going on with young professionals. Anyway, that's, um, God, when is that? I, didn't put the date down. The four, oh, the 14th, that's right, same date. I think it's from 6 to 7.30 over at the Center Club. And it's free, right? It's free? It's uh, $10 if you're not a chamber member, free for a chamber member. Free for a chamber member. Okay, great. Um, our business education lunch is going to be over at Morton's. Morton's is a new member of the Chamber of Commerce. And so, see you later. Diane's got to rush. She, that's why I was trying to rush her off, because she said she had to be out of here. Uh, Morton's uh, is a new chamber member. They're going to be hosting our business education lunch. The topic is work smarter, not harder. So that's something we should all aspire to. Work smarter, not harder. That's going to be on March 20th from 11.30 to 1.30. Um, Government Affairs Committee. So I introduced Kurt earlier. Kurt's going to be our speaker at the Government Affairs Committee meeting on the 21st. That's, so that's two weeks from t uh, today, I think, right? Yeah, from 8 to 9.30. That's over at the Chamber offices. Uh, so please join us for that. It's a great uh, meeting. Our Sunset Mixer, I don't think we, 
have a location yet? Okay, to be announced, but uh, definitely come to our Sunset Mixer. It's on March 28th. It's going to be someplace fabulous. I think we had over 150 people at Red O uh, a couple weeks ago, so it's, they're always great. A couple other things going on in town. This weekend's the Hogue Classic, so for you golfers that want to get out there, I think we'll have some decent weather at least for the next three days, uh, three or four days. So Hogue Classic's Friday through Sunday. I'm sure you can buy tickets uh, through their website online. I'll just mentioning it. And then last but not least, our own event, uh, one of the biggest events we do every year is the Police Appreciation Breakfast. It's March 29th. It's going to be over at the Hyatt uh, John Wayne Airport. Uh, usually we get about 500 people that sells out, So, and I think we're already close to 400, so uh, there's not a lot of tickets left. Certainly, uh, if you want to join us, wonderful breakfast. You'll, you know, the police are going to be there with their uh, the horses, the dogs, the SWAT vehicle, all that good stuff is going to be there, and it's uh, inspiring to hear um, you know, the stories of why these uh, officers, uh, and uh, actually the non-sworn as well, are getting their medals of merit and valor and you know, officer of the year and all that stuff. So please join us for that. Um, act, and we have uh, coming back is Keith Morrison. He's um, the voice of Dateline, uh, I think, Dateline, right? He's our uh, guest uh, uh, MC there that night, so, or that morning, so you can be entertained by Keith. And I'll mention Deborah Wells. Raise your hand, Deborah. Deborah is in charge of uh, sales for our business, uh, Newport Beach uh, magazine. Comes out in September, but we're, you know, we've already started the sales for that. So if you're interested in advertising that, see Deborah. And I think I pretty much covered everything. So have a great uh, rest of the month. We'll see you at Wake Up Newport. Oh, that's it. One thing I forgot. Next month, Wake Up Newport. Our guest speaker is Daryl uh, Johnson. He's the uh, director of the Orange County Transportation Authority. So if you have any questions about transportation in the county, he's the one to ask. Have a great week.